ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us, that one day we might live with our God forever. And yet He still promises to remain with us in the power of His Spirit. We gather and we give thanks in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And be with your spirit. spirit. Let us bow our heads and pray. Gladden us with holy joy, Almighty God, and make us rejoice with much thanksgiving. For the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body, all of us, are called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. we have been reading from the Acts of the Apostles, but we didn't start at the beginning. We went to the stories of the disciples spreading the gospel. Today we go to chapter 1, verse 1, that makes the transition from the last of Luke's gospel to the beginning of the church. And it's all centered on the action of Jesus and the response of the Apostles. Check it out. A reading from the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs that he had suffered, appearing to them during the forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, about which you have heard me speak. For John was baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel at this time? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And gave him as head over. 
over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
was traveling. And she came to discover stole partisans. A strange Greek word that means stumbling stones. They are little pieces of rock, bronze in color. And you will find them throughout Europe. They are inscribed with the name and the date of birth and the date of death. And when you walk around Europe, as she did, she became aware they are in the ground and they're up just a little bit so it's easily possible to stumble. But these stumbling stones remind people for generations of those who lost their lives because of the Nazis and their persecution. It's like they can never forget it, and you have to tread carefully, but their memory is forever etched on the floor of the earth. It's the same for us in the United States on Memorial Day weekend especially. What did we do? We go to our cemeteries. We walk the ground to the graves marked with a cross often and a flag, honoring the service that our women and men have given for generations. All the wars by which they lost their lives to save ours and grant us the freedom to be America. We never want to forget. We tread carefully to their gravesides, humbled by their selfless sacrifice. The numbers are nearing 100,000 in this country of people who have lost their lives because of the COVID-19 virus. And it is so easy for us, unless we know someone, not to realize how personal that is. And to have a number of such enormity is almost beyond our imagination. They have described it as if planes with 175 people in would crash one a day for the next 600 days to give us a sense of how much death has occurred. And now that we are set free to walk more easily, we can't walk forgetting how much death has occurred. The pain of the families that will continue to have their lives forever changed by the death of this loved one, someone they were not able to be with in the final moments, is an incredible tragedy. But that's where we find ourselves on this ascension day. Not looking up. We know where Jesus is. But we're stumbling to find what we're supposed to do on this earth with this kind of loss of lives, loss of jobs, a world routine that has been forever changed. And what does a new normal look like and feel like? And the image that St. Teresa of Avila has given us, rooted very much in what Paul was talking about. The head is gone, but now the body is filled with the fullness of Jesus. All the power, all the glory that raised him up is now the power and the glory that is in us, his body. He has no hands but ours. He has no feet to go anywhere except ours. He has no eyes to see human need 
but ours. We are called to be that body of Christ. Go make disciples. Enter the world. Be who I am, Jesus says. And yet right now, because we've been literally locked up for so long, we carry all the tension and the anxiety right straight into the world. Our families may have been the victim of, of that kind of frustration for the last two months, but it's still a part of us. And when we start going out, we become more impatient with each other, less tolerant, especially with wearing or not wearing masks. Everything now becomes a political state. And we continue to cry out what our liberties are because we are citizens of the United States. And all of that is true. And as a country, we're going to have to work through this. But when we enter the house of God's people, we become reminded of another reality. What we remember and renew throughout this Easter season, that we have been baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We are more than citizens of this country. We are also citizens of heaven. And that's why in the invitation to come back to church, I have asked you to come back wearing your mask. And we must make sure that as we enter the house of God's people, the mask is not a sign of a political statement. It must become a sign of who God is. The God who didn't need us but created us and delights in us. A God that was willing to give up His own Son to save us from the mess of our sinfulness. A God who loved us so much as Deacon Larry expressed so beautifully last week becomes that love between them and within us. We wear the mask not to protect ourselves. We wear the mask for each other. That's the nature of being godly people. It's not what I want, but what is good for someone else. And so wearing the mask as we come back, wearing the mask in society, must be for us believers in Jesus a sign that we are absolutely committed to stumble along this earth and literally fall to the ground in care and concern for what somebody else is going through. That continues to be one of the greatest goods coming out of this pandemic. Is that day after day, commercial after commercial, we are hearing the stories even in the daily news of how people are responding to other people. That the hunger and the loss of jobs continues to be an opportunity for us to stand up and show the care. If they're going to believe that a God loves them, that Jesus died to save them because they were so important, they have to know it and feel it in us, His body. Christ depends on us to make that happen. That's our power, that's our gift. Our world yearns for it. There's a story told about a young boy who one day asked his grandpa, what does it mean to die? And grandpa tried his best to explain it to the child, 
But then his grandson said, Grandpa, does that mean you're not going to be here anymore? And Grandpa said, yes. And the boy said, does that mean that you're not going to play catch with me anymore? And Grandpa said, yes. Does that mean that you're not going to fly a kite with me anymore? Yes, my son. D does that mean that you're not going to go fishing with me anymore? Grandpa said, that's what it means. And the grandson goes, well, Grandpa, who's going to do these things for me if you aren't there? Throughout the Easter season, we continue to proudly renounce all that is evil and profess all that we believe. To the renunciation of evil, I ask you to respond, I do. Do you reject Satan and all the glamour and enticement of evil? I do. Do you reject the evil that separates races, nations, and individuals? I do. Do you reject the evil that so easily gives in to greed, selfishness, hatred, violence, and revenge? I do. Then I ask you even more loudly to profess your faith by responding, I do believe. Do you believe that God created heaven and earth and everything and everyone absolutely good? I do believe. Do you believe that God fell in love with us, gave up His only Son, who would take on our humanity, suffer and die, be raised up by God's power, and be seated at God's right hand to intercede on our behalf? Do you believe in Jesus the Lord? I do believe. Do you believe that love is forever in our hearts by the power of the Spirit that draws us together as one? Holy, Catholic, and Apostolic Church. I do believe. Do you believe that God forgives every sin, every time? And that even when death comes, will not abandon us, but will rescue us, take us home, that we might live with God and all the saints forever. Do you believe in eternal life? I do believe. That is our faith. And today we profess it proudly. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. With Christ interceding on our behalf, without hesitation, we dare to bring to God the needs of all the world. For the Church, that empowered by the Holy Spirit, we may faithfully give witness to the Gospel and continue Christ's mission of bringing hope and healing to those in need. We pray, Lord, bless, bless your people. For all those who are fearful or anxious, that they may recognize God's message, fear not, is for them. 
and allow God to calm their spirits and give them hope. We pray, Lord, bless your people. For those who are ill, especially those stricken with COVID-19, that God's healing spirit will fill them, ease their pain, and restore them to wholeness, we pray. Lord, bless your people. For all those who have served our country in the military and rest in our cemeteries, that they know of our deep and eternal gratitude. We also remember those in active duty, that God protect them and keep them safe from harm, we pray. Lord, bless your people. For peace throughout the world, that God will turn the hearts of world leaders from violence toward cooperation in facing the challenges that confront all the human race. We pray, Lord, bless your people. For those who are grieving in Christ, that their tears will be dried and they be given peace. We remember those who have died, especially Butch Krug, Nathan Hallahan, Mary Bowden's Distel, Marilyn Meyer, Matt Timmers, and Mary McMahon, that they embrace peace with the company of the saints. We pray. Lord, bless the your people. For the prayers held in the silence of our hearts, and for all the prayers written in this book of intentions, which we now lift to God, we pray. Lord, bless your people. Gracious and loving Father, we rejoice in the gift of your Son, Jesus, that you have exalted in glory. Never forget how much we depend on you to accomplish your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we are seated and the altar is prepared, I remind you that that blue ascension envelope, make sure that you are either sending it or continuing to give online. That is the way we let God know how grateful we are for all the blessings, even in the most difficult times.
Bread is the work of our human hands, the wine, the joy, and the struggle of our lives, the money we worked hard for. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. We can never say thanks enough to all those first responders, all those people who continue to work on our behalf, taking risks to make sure that we are cared for. And this weekend, we cannot ever forget the sacrifice of our veterans. And we can never forget at this table the promise of where we're going, that ultimate gift of God, a life that never ends. We give thanks. The Lord be with you. Let us follow before God. 
A similar way when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, gave you thanks and praise. He gave the chalice to his friends and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us bow before our God.
us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. And grant peace in our day. Protect us from all harm. Free us from all anxiety. As we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Share a sign of peace appropriate to your situation.
I invite you to close your eyes for a moment and in the silence of your heart feel the presence and the power that is Christ and offer your personal thanks. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries as citizens of heaven, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature will finally be united with you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. the death of our parishioner, Mary McCann. Mary died this past week at the age of 92. When I first came here, she was always in that second pew because she was tiny and she wanted to be able to see everything. And then as weakness continued to be a part of her struggle, she ended up way in the back, but I was able to find her there and bless her. Faithful to her God, delighted in this parish, and a school teacher of great regard. She passed on Tuesday at 92. I also announced the death of Mary Blackmore. She is the mother of Neil Blackmore. She too, faithful and loving mother and grandmother, and so for both Marys, eternal rest grant to them, O Lord, and the perpetual light shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Saturday is the feast of St. Joan of Arc, and of course our two parishes coming together is significant because one of the voices that Joan of Arc heard was Catherine of Alexandria, also the Archangel Michael as well as St. Margaret. Her story is in the bulletin today, a marvelous patron. And we ask her to battle with us against the virus and against the challenges that so easily could overwhelm us. A teenager who thought nothing was impossible with God. That brings us to this moment and I have been waiting to uh, be able to announce and celebrate the fact that the doors are going to be open and we're ready to come and celebrate Pentecost, the birth of the church. The disciples behind their locked doors, confined at home, were now set free. That is happening in our country and in our state. And the Archbishop gave permission for us to open the doors next Sunday. When our staffs came together to look at the guidelines for how you worship, the numbers are limited, wearing masks is a part of it, and the cleaning and the spacing, all of those things have to be done. As we've done those preparations in the last two weeks, I sensed a growing anxiety among our staffs. They're not quite sure that we're ready. I 
checked with the archdiocese, and as of Wednesday, there are 18 Catholic parishes in the archdiocese that will not open on the 31st. I asked the vicar of clergy how the archbishop felt about that, and his response was that the archbishop trusts the judgments of pastors about what is best for their people. This past week, there's been greater clarification about how the virus is spread, less on surfaces, and more about ventilation, and for houses of worship, singing. Not even our mask can hold uh, the drops that can come out and spread the disease. Medical people and scientists are telling us that next to nursing homes, churches are the most dangerous place to contract the virus. All that forced me to pause. Deacon Larry, as I mentioned in the letter, have been cleared to reside at worship now with our own health issues. But are you, our, our staff, that I will count on to be able to make this happen, I am aware. So for that reason, I have sent a poll to our parish pastoral council, asking them to weigh in. Do you think we're ready, or should we wait? I asked our staff to do the same. I will pray over those results, but in the meantime, the directions have been given in the letter to reserve your spots because we can only accept a limited number. So please continue to do that all the way until Thursday at 5 o'clock. Then the reservations close. It is at that point that I will make the final determination about whether we will open on the 31st or have to delay a bit. And that decision weighs on me very heavily. I'd love to be able to have you back. But I worry about your well-being as well. And I would want nothing to happen to you because you stepped forward to worship. I ask your prayers for all of us as we come to a final decision. Those of you that make your reservations, you will receive a call confirming them or telling you that we're going to wait. But because you called in and made a reservation, whenever we would open, we would have that reservation. So you won't have to call back again. But await the confirmation call will come after Thursday of this coming week. And then by means of the website, robocalls, email blasts, we'll let everybody else know if the doors will open on the 31st. May the Spirit of God guide us to do what is right and good for all. A special thanks to our readers, Mary Sue and Pat, John, our faithful minister at the table, Leisha as our musician today, with Bill, Jerry on the guitar, and our delightful Jewish brother on the horn. It is the efforts of this group that continue to make Mass possible. And that is going to continue, thanks to the SAFs and, of course, to the man behind the camera, Paul. You'll see his face in today's bulletin as well. We are grateful. That will continue no matter what happens. So if you're not able or don't think you should come out, videotaping a Mass will be there always. I invite you to bow your heads and ask for God's blessing.
May the merciful God that created heaven to be our eternal home continue to walk with us every day. Let the church say amen. 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 May the Lord Jesus Christ, seated at the right hand of the Father, but never leaving us by the power of His Spirit, continue to send us up to do all that He did and even more. Let the church say amen. 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 May the fire of the Holy Spirit purge whatever evil is in our hearts and set them aflame with a love and a peace that comes from God. Let the church say Amen. 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 And the blessing of Almighty God descend upon you this day and all days. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As we take our lead into the world, we must be prepared. Let us go, love and serve.